Some say history is a river that flows endlessly. I say that history is a series of stories written by each person's experiences. Welcome to Stories, a history of Appalachia, one story at a time. Appalachia is our home, and we love it dearly. But these hills are also the home of some strange and mysterious beings, some of which we've told you about over the last year and a half. Well, today, Rod and I have the story of the most well-known of these creatures, the Mothman of West Virginia. And Rod, I know you've been itching to tell this story for quite a while, so I'll let you get it started. Yeah, Steve, this is a very interesting story, and I know I always say that each one of these stories are interesting, but yes, I have been chomping at the bit to tell this one about the Mothman for quite a while. So part of West Virginia folklore, the Mothman has been the subject of books and movies over the years, but surprisingly, the actual creature was only seen or heard about for a little over a year in the Point Pleasant area of West Virginia. Now, the legend starts in the fall of 1966 when five men were digging a grave near the town of Clendenin, West Virginia, for a burial that was to occur. While they were hard at work on November 12th of that year, getting that plot of ground ready, they happened to notice something odd. What they saw was a man-like figure fly just over their heads from some nearby trees. This was the first sighting. Well, three days later, two young couples from Point Pleasant were taking a ride in the countryside near the McClinty Wildlife Refuge on West Virginia Route 62 in an area known as the TNT area, which was named for an old World War II munitions plant that had been located there. As they came over a hill, they came face to face with a creature the likes of which they'd never laid eyes on before. Well, these four, Roger and Linda Scarberry, and Steve and Mary Mallet said that they saw a large white creature whose eyes glowed bright red. While swerving around the creature, they attempted to drive away. However, seconds later, they found the Mothman was back in front of their car. More frightened than ever, the two couples headed back for town, flying down the road at nearly 100 miles an hour. As they drove, this thing flew right behind them at the same speed, sometimes lifting up high into the air, sometimes back down but always right behind them. Well, they took every turn they could to shake this creature, even taking farm roads as a shortcut. And on one of these roads, the thing managed to get in front of the car and immediately alighted on the road in front of them to block their path, lying there like a big old lump of flesh, you know. Well, the couples backed up, headed back in the opposite direction to get to town. Later that night, they returned to the farm road, this time with the deputy sheriff, The lump in the road was gone, but they did find a strange pile of dust in its place. Sounds weird. Sounds like the dust that comes off the wings. Do you know what I'm talking about, Steve? Mm, Yeah, like on a moth or a butterfly, yeah. Yeah, well, well, they described this thing to the deputy as a large flying man with 10-foot wings. And these weren't the only sightings, though. Over the next several days that November, two volunteer firemen saw it, describing it as a large bird with big red eyes. A contractor, Newell Partridge, said that he had aimed a flashlight at something in a field near his house and saw a creature whose eyes glowed like bicycle reflectors. Never heard anything quite put like that before. But Partridge also attributed the disappearance of his German shepherd dog and buzzing sounds from his TV to this thing. Tom Urey of Clarksburg, West Virginia, also saw the creature as it hovered behind his car as he was traveling at 70 miles an hour. Now, a service station attendant by the name of Ralph Thomas told the Charleston Daily Mail that some relatives had parked down from his house, which was in the area of the old TNT plant, intending to play a prank on him. They crept up on the house and pecked on the window to scare him over the Mothman fears. After letting Mr. Thomas know who they were and getting a big laugh out of the prank, they returned to the car, where they found the actual Mothman standing. At spotting it, the two, Mrs. Raymond Wamsley and Mrs. Robert Bennett, along with 18-month-old Tina Bennett, took off for the Thomas house at full speed, Mrs. Bennett and child falling in the mad rush. According to Mr. Thomas, It seemed like something hovered over her and got her in a trance or something, and she couldn't hardly get up off the ground. Once inside the house, it, as he called it, stared at them through the screen door for several minutes 
until it departed. Well, experts and police officers tried to calm the public with explanations for what was being seen in this part of Appalachia. Mason County Sheriff George Johnson said that he believed that the beast was actually a type of large heron that he called a shite poke. Have you ever heard of a shite poke? No, I haven't. I'd never heard about that until you mentioned that here on the podcast. Well, that must be like a northern Appalachian term that well, I'm not familiar with. Anyway, well, it may be. the shite poke or large heron probably was a sandhill crane. At least that's what a wildlife biologist by the name of Dr. Robert L. Smith of West Virginia University weighed in with. The sandhill crane is about the height of a man with a seven-foot wingspan. Also, the colorings of the sandhill crane fit the descriptions of the Mothman. Well, these appearances continue to occur up until December 15, 1967. On that day, the Silver Bridge over the Ohio River at Point Pleasant collapsed into the river. The bridge, a suspension bridge built back in 1928, carried U.S. Route 35 traffic between Point Pleasant and Gallipolis, Ohio. The bridge was full of rush hour traffic on the afternoon of the 15th when it fell sending 46 people to their deaths, with two victims never recovered. An investigation of the wreckage indicated that the collapse could be traced to the failure of an eye bar in a suspension chain and that the bridge was carrying much heavier loads than it had originally been designed for. Poor maintenance was also a factor in the collapse. And with the collapse of the Silver Bridge, the Mothman disappeared. Although there have been sporadic reported sightings of the creature, including a purported photo of it published by WCHS-TV in 2016, which appeared on closer examination to be of an owl carrying a snake. There have been no credible appearances of a man-sized creature with 10-foot wings and glowing red eyes in the 50 years since the Silver Bridge fell. But however brief was the time that the Mothman appeared among the residents of West Virginia, he lives on in popular culture. In 1975, John Keel wrote the book, The Mothman Prophecies, which tied up the appearances of the Mothman to the Silver Bridge failure, saying that the collapse was predicted by the creature. Keel also pointed to other strange sightings by Point Pleasant residents during the same time, including premonitions of the collapse, UFOs, and visits from threatening men in black. Now, the book was also made into a 2002 movie. Well, skeptics say that there are reasonable explanations for all the appearances, like pranksters, unfamiliar animals visiting the area, and the like. None of this has stopped Point Pleasant, though, from making the most of the legend of the Mothman. Starting in 2002, the city held its first annual Mothman Festival and unveiled a 12-foot-tall metal statue of the creature the next year. There is also, Rod, believe it or not, a Mothman Museum and Research Center which was opened in 2005. The Mothman Festival is a week-long affair held on the third weekend of every September, and if you go, you'll not only get to see the Mothman himself, at least in the form of his statue, but you can hear from guest speakers, enjoy a Mothman pancake eating contest, Mm-mm. and take a hayride tour of Point Pleasant, West Virginia, which we are confident would be well worth the visit to the city. Well, you know, Steve, there's also another story, too, that I heard at one time that the Mothman, they thought, was the product of experimentation mm -hmm. because of the TNT uh, building or whatever we were talking about earlier in the podcast. Because of a munitions plant, they thought that the Mothman was some form of a mutation or creature that had been developed and researched there and had got out finally from this research facility there in West Virginia, but, you know, that's never been proven. So there's a lot of stories about the Mothman, which, you know, have kind of been out there, but they've never really been proven. Right. And, and we've kind of held off on talking about the Mothman because pretty much everybody that talks about Appalachian history, first thing they talk about is what? The Mothman. So we, we just wanted to give you our own take on this story, this part of Appalachian history. And that is the story of the Mothman of Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Real or not, he's a part of the history of this place we call home, Appalachia. Thanks for listening. You can subscribe to our podcast at Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, or on your very own podcast app. You can follow us for more stories on Twitter at Story Appalachia and on Facebook at Stories of Appalachia. 
And, Rod, we also have our own online radio station where you can hear this story and many others. It's Stories Radio, and it's available on Shoutcast and on the TuneIn app. Simply add us to your favorites list. Thanks for listening. Till next we meet, take care. So long, everybody. 